Hello and welcome to Take Your Time, a Persona podcast in which we're playing Persona 3 Reload in real time along with the in-game calendar. And we have arrived, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone, we are at the final full moon. Yeah, we beat the game. We I'm, did. I'm proud. I'm proud of us. You saw the credits. It all finished up. We're good to go. Nothing well, else that's, happens. That's going to come next week. Obviously. Sure, of course. We, I assume you we, just kept going. Y- uh, yeah, no. I'm joined, as always, this week by my co-host, Tom Marks. Before we get into the shenanigans, I'll let me introduce yeah. you. <laughs> Hi. Hello. How you doing? I'm I'm good. I am... This is... Uh, this week, obviously we'll get into it, is a funny one to be doing this show with, right? Where it's like, very clearly, this is not how you're intended to play the game. No. <laughs> well, and we even extended right this week. Yeah. But I thought if we go too far, it might take away from next week's episode. And I kind of wanted us to have at least a regular output of stuff was, was yeah. the intention here. I'm glad we get to discuss this and I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah. Excited to dig into it. Yeah. And this week we are digging into specifically October 27th through November 3rd. We added one extra day so that we could cover the full moon this week because uh let's be honest the rest of the week is pretty quiet there's a couple scenes here or there certainly the night before but it is generally another free time week and we thought let's let's kick off november let's end october with this fun little full moon so we're going to be doing that uh going over the week and and tom's expectations there around it uh, as <laughs> yeah. we go forward but before we get there we have uh quite a bit of housekeeping to get through at first so Let's start off things with our Confidant callout. This is, of course, a huge shout out and thank you to everyone over at patreon.com slash take your time who is supporting us at the Palace Ruler tier. Uh, We appreciate all of your support for helping make the show happen and for your your dedication and love for what we do. It means so much to us. So as always, a huge thank you and Confidant callout to Akechi as a Jellybean, Astral Clock Tower, Brody S, Cameron C., Claudia R, Dallas, Damon, Dan, Dan F, Danimal Lover 01, Default Titus, Dexter, I Kill Gods for Fun, Caitlin E, Keegan H, Metaphor Refantasio Out Now, Michael V, <laughs> Philip S, Programmer Sid, Sam K, Sarah M, Shade, and Willie Wang Wang. Thank you all so much for supporting us and to everyone who is supporting us over at patreon.com. Slash take your time if you want to head over there to get episodes early, ad free, and bonus episodes uh, and interact with a wonderful little community that's going on over there. Head on over to patreon.com slash take your time. And speaking of the Patreon, before we get into the show proper, uh, a few things to mention. One, our October bonus episodes are up. So you have two extra episodes over there if you haven't listened already. Uh, The big one for the month is, of course, Tom and I talking about metaphor. We dig into our thoughts of, I'd say, roughly the first 30-ish hours of the game. Is it, Something is, like that. Yeah, little, about Maybe give or are. take, but yeah. And we had a lot to say. It was a really fun conversation. I feel like we could have gone for an entire day and just kept oh, talking. Yeah. So head on over if you want to hear that. Also, just full spoilers, anything in those 30 hours we talk about, we just start going. So like, don't... Uh, there's a couple moments we talk about where I was like, you should really make sure you've played. So play yeah word of advice but, but we we caveat all of that within the episode we so, do yeah. as well but just saying it here so no one gets mad and says i only played five minutes why didn't you say anything we said <laughs> yes. something in addition to that we also have a uh the second of our audio only episodes that are now going up every month uh, in which tom and i talk a little bit about anime because there's not enough people talking about anime on the internet so we thought we should uh it's no. true it was it was a fun time. Glad we could do it. A- a- anime, an underrated thing that nobody discusses. Really, yeah, out out in the ethers of the pop culture sphere, definitely something that doesn't draw millions of people to fan conventions every year. A hidden gem, if you will. Indeed. Well, I'm glad we could shine a spotlight on the <laughs> the sorely under discussed anime. Uh, but no, that was a really fun one as I uh, continue to just fully dive in. Uh, as this episode will have gone live, I will have a finish. I will have finished, not have a finished. I'm not Mario. Attack on Titan. Uh, I have not as of recording, but I will by then. So I'll let you Wahoo. know how it goes. 
we're blazing through. Uh, but you can listen to that episode if you want to hear more. And I will also say for anyone who is interested in joining the Patreon, uh, just a general heads up, I believe this does not affect existing subscribers, though if you want to check it and, and make sure I totally understand, but I believe this only relates to people who newly want to subscribe to Patreon. Uh, if you would like to subscribe to us or any other Patreons that you're showing support and love for, if you sign up via Apple, like via the Patreon app on an Apple device, uh, I believe on iPhone and whatnot, you will get charged an extra 30% that doesn't go to the creators. Uh, it goes to Apple, so it's, it doesn't benefit us for you to do it that way. So while it is a little bit more frustrating uh, because who's on a desktop th these days. But if you'd like to directly support, head on over just to the main site uh, to sign up for a Patreon. So you're also not spending more money that you don't need to be. Yeah, uh, and I believe you can sign up on a computer and then log into the app and use it like normal on the app. It's just yes. if you do the actual sign up through it, Apple is adding this little fee. Yeah, it's the sign up, and I believe specifically for new subscribers. So, or right. or if you've like lapsed and are re-signing up via the app, I think it might do it there too. But uh, there's information on Patreon's websites and 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 feeds and whatnot to check out if you're interested. But just wanted to put that as a PSA out there. So, for those who are gracious gracious enough to put some money our way, you don't need to be spending extra. Uh, but we we appreciate it. However, you choose to show support. Uh, thank you all so much for everyone out there. And uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it before we get into the episode. But of course, Tom, tell us about that pop quiz from last week. Yes. So last week I asked uh, a question that people could find the answer to this week as well. If you talk through all of your teachers and do the Mr. Ono side quest where you try to get the helmet for uh, Elizabeth. When you finally do get the helmet, Mr. Ono says that he'd already given a helmet to one other person, a student. And I asked, who was that person? Did we get any guesses? Do you have a guess yourself? Do you know the answer? Uh, I did know the answer, and I believe so many people got it correct that Ooh. we are good to go. So congratulations to everyone out there. But uh, the answer that I do want to read first, of course, is Sable, who said, Koromaru has the helmet because he is the bestest boy and deserves all the things. That is that is the answer in my heart, at least. It would be great if he wore that into battle. Let's be real. <laughs> get him that uh, costume. No, but the actual answer is, of course, Bebe. Bebe, yes. Uh, so, so, Which is fitting, because Bebe loves Japanese culture, and so it is. it makes sense that he would want a helmet. It does. So hats off to Nick, Dexter, uh, who else got it? Francis got it over on the Patreon as well, as did Lydia over on YouTube. So thank you all for uh, writing in with the correct answer. It was, uh, Tom, I appreciate it, whether or not you intended it to be a, a little bit of a lob, we had a lot of right answers, so I appreciate that. Good. I'm glad. I mean, it wasn't like... I, I try to vary the questions in difficulty. It's not... That was not meant to be like a gimme, but it definitely is not one of the the more devious I've ever asked. That's fair. Uh, also, fun fact that Francis said, you can actually notice Bebe chatting with that teacher during the first day of school. Oh, that's cute. So, specifically, just a cute little thing to point out. I, yeah. I love that they have those little callbacks. Yeah, very, very cute. I love, especially, I think we talked about when the game started, but it's like, huh, all the characters that have really distinct hairstyles and personalities that are just around here, but not named, I'm sure they'll never come up again. That's pretty <laughs> yeah. much how it goes. Yeah. But yeah, I think without further ado, let's get into this week in Persona because we have a full moon to talk about. Ooh. But before this that, we have an entire week of hanging out. We do. It's a lot of hanging out. Uh, so I hope you used your time wisely, if you could, because some of those evenings were dry, but we'll get there. Mm. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, the week of October 27th through November 3rd. So yes. we kick things off on October 27th. It's a pretty normal day. We, at the beginning of the day, just get the hint more from conversation that more people are getting apathy syndrome. Obviously, we're getting there. As the game likes to do, it reminds us that the full moon is on its way, which it also does at the end of this day. But otherwise, I think it's just free time. So Yeah, pretty much. There's well, some girls talking about apathy syndrome showing up on the news to sort of like hammer home that it is happening more yes yeah but uh yeah so what did you do on your day and night day uh the start of a trend of this week inspired by our pop quiz answer not really but sort of uh i got baby to rank six 
Nice. Hung out with Bebe a lot this week. Very nice. I uh, uh, I have a feeling we're going to have reoccurring friend hangouts, both of us, this week. Then. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and then in the evening, I gardened with Fuka, which was, I think, the second level of that for her. Okay, cool. Yeah. I hung out with Haraga at the art club and got him to rank eight. Wow. You are and way ahead of me on that one. I Again, it's one of those that I just, I've made a point to because I ignored it on my first run. So just sure. trying to make up where I can. And then in the evening, hung out with our wonderful man Tanaka and got him to huh. rank 10. Hooray! You and never I have now, to talk to him again. Yeah. And so I'm now, <laughs> oh, my camera's freaking out. Uh, I'm sort of light acquaintances with this man. I wouldn't really call us bonded, really. Yeah, it's it's wild how little changes in that relationship as it goes on. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say it's not really a relationship and more of a one-sided conversation. But mm -hmm. we'll get there maybe someday to talk about. And then at the end of that day, we get a little visit from our pal, Pharos. Yes. He's like, uh, hey, how's it going? It's all it's all happening. Seven days. The twelfth ordeal. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. The, he also has a quote in this little conversation that I appreciated given this show, which was, I can't tell if time's been at a crawl or flying on by. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, is like, hmm, real. That's real. <laughs> It really hits when you've been playing it in real time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever they remark on the passage of time, I'm like, yeah, it really hits different when we do it in this show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little different than when you play 80 hours of a game in a weekend and you're like, I've not seen the sun for years. But, <laughs> yeah. Then on October 28th, we go right into the free time as far as I'm aware. Uh, I think so. Yeah. So what'd you do with your day before we get to the potentially what you did in the evening? Yeah, I did. I think, yeah. Uh, so during the day, I did rank seven with Bebe. So I, nice. I, like I said, I hung out with Bebe a lot this week. So got him up to seven. And I got Haraga up to rank nine. Ah. So we're functionally just different floors of the school. Yeah, 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 yeah. pretty much. And then we get to an evening where you are inclined. I mentioned this, I think, a week or two ago, that if you wanted to go check out Shinji's room, you could. And this is where the game tells you to maybe go do that. Yeah, but, I completely forgot that you had said that. So that's I'm really okay. Glad, I'm, I'm glad that Akutsuki tells you, hey, go to go, <laughs> go to his room, please. Yeah, Akutsuki's um, in the lobby, suggests you go up to Aragaki's room. It's... Uh, uh, pretty barren obviously you can walk in there he didn't decorate at all what a shock uh very much befitting of the man and he has all of his belongings essentially boxed up they're on the desk in his room the room's laid bare other than his box and then you can kind of go into the drawer of the desk and so as you presumably do kind of look into things you find an envelope there that was the school reinstatement form and while whoa, whoa, whoa. What? You're skipping the most important part. I get all his items back so I can oh, sell yes. them. <laughs> Forgive me. No, I, did, I didn't I did actually sell his items. I kept them for sentimental reasons. I, I did the same. Yeah, you could, but I want my bus stop sign. I want to keep it with me at all times. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you get all his stuff. You yeah. weirdly scavenge at his desk. <laughs> yeah. And then you also get the school reinstatement form that doesn't have a date or anything on it, but is signed with obviously the implication. If you did that side story with Shinji of the, of the back and forth about him coming back shows that he did sort of intend at some point, maybe to come back to school. Right. As or, or at least was considering it. And yes. Yeah. He had It's, it's very it. sad. Yeah. It's very sad. The, the glimmer of hope for a future for him was, uh, you know, I think the intention there. But as you're reminiscing over this, Mitsuru comes in. She's taken aback by seeing that he has signed it. it. It obviously means a lot to her because to her, it means he was thinking about the promise that they had all made to each other that you, you find out about uh, a few weeks ago. And it really, really affects her, but she wants to, for the moment, keep it between the two of you. She considers maybe telling Akihiko about it, but thinks that she'll tell him instead once they've left the dorm. Because right. she doesn't want, I guess, to distract him or to worry him or to like cause him con concern about like where things were left and, and maybe like frustrate him at the idea of what could have been. But Yeah, 
It's all very, very sad. Yeah. And inspires you to be able to fuse Hell Biker. Which, as I wrote, is is titled The Hooligan of the Underworld. It's just... The, the, I love this game, and I also love how straight-faced it puts these, like, really genuinely emotional, sad topics next to just the goofiest mechanical stuff in the world. You have ascended to the highest realm of friendship with the most important person in your life. You now get plus one on luck. Like, what? <laughs> what are we doing here? It you is can fuse gobbledygoo, <laughs> the silly dancer. <laughs> Well, it's so funny. It'll be, it'll be stuff like that, and it's like, and now you confuse Thor, and it's like, what? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh. so just a sweet little scene, a sort of coda to everything that happened with Shinji, to again let you know that the process of of grieving is still going on, to understand yeah. where things sit with him. I, I I don't know if you have any other thoughts, but I I like that no. the scene is there. It's a very welcome scene. It's, again, I think another good example of something that was probably, I assume, added in Reload, given that it's tied to the, the form thing. Yeah, I, I don't know, um, I would guess, yeah. Or at least that part of the conversation. Uh, and another good example of a scene that feels vital that they leave optional. Like, I'm really glad that Akutsuki talks to you because they, you know, they're there's no other indication to do this <laughs> unless you were spending every night of this game going to each door and checking to see if you can go in it yet yeah there would be no <laughs> reason you would know to go do this so yeah but but yeah regardless it's a it's a very nice and appreciated scene and i'm glad that we got this little coda at the end of of his story yeah and then you still have a free night because that conversation was apparently 30 seconds so what how yep. did you spend it uh well there was literally nothing to do so I went and played a video game at the arcade to get my Black Frost magic up by three. <laughs> Black Which Frost is bad. a good pers- uh, good shadow. So like I Black- get it. Black Frost is good. Yeah. And three is not nothing. No. And there really is nothing to do sometimes. So <laughs> you do what yep. you can. I had a few more websites, I think, than you left. So I did the history mm-hmm. website note that enhances my ambush. Oh, cool. Yeah. Then we move on. October 29th, it's a just straight day after an un- another wonderful Edogawa lecture. Yeah. The funny thing is, this is, you know, slight spoilers for a couple days from now. Uh, the lecture is all about summoning, mm. like summoning magic. And I was like, I wonder if that's going to have something to do with the boss. And then I went, no, I guess it's just about personas, because you summon your persona, and I guess that's just really what they're talking about. And then I got to the boss, and it summons these statues, and I was like, ah, they did I it. knew it. Yeah. It's like when they say the title in the name of the movie. You're like, yes, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I love that you can, I love that the lectures frequently hint forward at things that are coming. I think that's always been a, a great touch of these these games. Absolutely. It's one of those silly meta textual elements that obviously doesn't make sense that they would know those things are coming up. It's just a wonderful happenstance, but it's fun. It's I like having them there. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And then you have a day and a night. So what did you do for both? I hung out with Haraga. I got him to rank four. Nice. And I feel like we actually have like his story is actually starting now. It's like yeah. there was a lot of groundwork in the first three for him. Uh, and I'm, I'm into it. He seems he seems like a cool character. And then uh, I think in the evening I had nothing to do again, nothing useful to do. So I gardened with Junpei, okay. who I had already completed the thing with. But I currently have golden tomatoes growing, and Ooh. I figured it would not be a bad idea to up them a lot. That's a good call. Yeah. yeah. Did you, I'm totally blanking, forgive me. Did you finish both nighttime confidants that we've had, social yeah. links? Okay. Yeah, 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 I finished both of them a while ago, Mutatsu and Tanaka. Enjoy the nights, my man. Enjoy the <laughs> nights. Lots of gardening, golden tomatoes. Oh, yeah. I hung out with Haraga and got him to rank 10. Hey, congrats. So maxed out that social link. And then I hung out with Mutatsu and got him to rank 8. Okay. So, yeah. So you're, you're almost done with those. Yeah, I really put them off just knowing how the nights are. So I was like, yeah, I can get to these guys eventually. But, yeah, Tanaka's done, so he's my only focus. Sure. On to Oct- uh, October. I don't know why I was going to say it. I, I was going to say October 8th because of the number Ock. That's where my brain is right now, Tom. Can you tell it's been a week? 
October 30th. What a joy. Elizabeth calls to let you know some dummy is in Tartarus. You got to get him out. Yep. And it's almost time. So go to Tartarus. Yeah, I was I was expecting this one. I did. I finished Tartarus last week, right? But I, I was expecting someone to show up in the last week of it. Yeah. It is only fair that the game does this to you. And hey, it's a, it's an excuse to maybe get an extra level or two. Uh, right. You know, clean up if you haven't. It's a good reminder that, hey, you should be leveling up. Right. You get into class. There's a question about sweet potatoes. Yes. Which is uh, relevant to the gardening section of what you're doing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see the sweet potato connection in the final fight with Takaya. I will say that much. That's what happens when we uh, split up episodes like we do. You fight a giant sweet potato the day after, my friend. <laughs> uh, I did think it was interesting that sweet potatoes get sweet, genuinely get sweeter when you bake them. Yeah. So, I had no idea. Sweet potatoes was, are good. You should eat them. The more you know. <laughs> good fiber. Uh, good good taste to them. When they, when they season them just right at like a fast food place, that's, that's a good fry. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway. Or, Ooh. counterpoint... When Americans cover them in brown sugar, butter, and marshmallows for some reason. Ah, yes. Our time-honored traditions. Tom, you're getting Either... weeks ahead of us. <laughs> I know, right? That'll be... I guess that's our bonus no. episode, just what our Thanksgiving dinner is. <laughs> I'm, not getting, I'm not getting weeks ahead of us because the game is over. True. It's not, yeah, not going to get to Thanksgiving. There will be nothing to talk about then. Uh, but we do have a day here to talk about a day and a night, so yes. what did you do? Uh, I got Baby to rank eight, uh, which again, no spoilers. This was definitely one of those, those confidant hangouts where I went, Oh, a filler episode because it was like, it pretty much said nothing new and was just reiterating stuff that we had talked about in the previous confidant rank. And I was like, Oh, okay. Oh, my friend, I am struggling. Oh no. (laughs) And you're like, Oh, that's too bad. And it's like, thank you. The end. (laughs) That, that accent, that accent was so, was a little more Lumiere than Bebe, I think. That's but I true. I mean, that's it. my that's my point of reference for the French. So. <laughs> yeah. Apologies um, to all our French listeners out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then in the evening, I watched a, I watched the last of the movies with Ken. Uh, so I got his. I think it was upgrading his ability because I had already done the first one. So I, I finished up Ken Ken's hangouts or whatever. Nice. Okay, and there's cool. a very cute moment in that where he he's like, "I'm gonna stay up because I'm an adult," and then he falls asleep on the couch. Oh yeah, yeah, that one's <laughs> cute. Ken, he's great. Kind of love he's him. Great. I hung out with Fuka, who I realized I've been neglecting a little bit, and also because even though uh, I am in love with Yukari, mm-hmm. for some reason to rank ten, I don't have enough points for it to go up. What? Where, so you fall in love with her at rank nine. Oh, so you can't get it to ten yet? I have to hang out with her in between, but I'm like, but we're dating. What? Yeah, man, you gotta hang out with your girlfriend. That's ridiculous. Sounds awful. Like I have time for that. Come on, guys. I have Sui Mitsu to hang out with. <laughs> uh, anyway, on principle of trying not to waste time in the game, I went and hung out with Fuka and got her to rank four. And man, then I imagine, tra- imagine saying telling someone you love them and then immediately the first opportunity that they're like inconvenient to you're like i'm hanging out with this other lady instead what you probably your closest friend i'm hanging out with instead yeah (laughs) Yeah. and then in the evening to make matters worse i cooked with yukari to try to get some friendship points oh so well that's 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 nice i spent the evening with her you know yeah i didn't made it up to her this makes me sound like a horrible person. Let's go to <laughs> Halloween. It's October 31st. The spooky season is among us and nothing really has happened in spooky. It's yeah. I was yeah. a little disappointed. There's not really anything, right? Am I misremembering? I don't, unless there's something in the city that maybe you can see or notice. I don't know what's around, but yeah. Yeah. It was just sort of, I mean like it's whatever. It's fine. It's not a big deal. I, I just like, it, it it surprised me that there was like base I think literally nothing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. That's fine. We're just going to skip Halloween. Do you like to play spooky games around Halloween or do you not like go out of your way to do that? 
No, I hate anything. I mean, I dislike anything horror. Okay, that's fair. And anything horror is not my cup of tea. And it's not even like, I don't know. I just, it's, what's the right way to put this? Like, as Patreon listeners know, I can handle spice, right? Sure. But I don't want that on all of my meals. And it's sort of a similar thing of like, I don't really mind horror stuff. It's not like I'm cower in a corner away from it, but it's just like not the emotions I want to make my body feel. <laughs> Does that make sense? Sure. No, I, I get where you're coming from. I don't, I don't. It's, it just doesn't appeal to me. Yeah, I get that. I have like a a threshold where it goes to be too much for me. Like I've, mm. as I've gotten older, I've, I've appreciated horror a little bit more and, and dug into the genre a bit because I just didn't experience it at all as a kid, but I do have a limit. Sure. And that limit is, I just will not go see the terrifier movies, but <laughs> just curious since we're on the holiday. Well, yeah, no. we don't, we don't celebrate it on the show and we don't celebrate it in the game either. So instead, Let's talk about what we did that day, because as as we know, the full moon is almost here. Yukari reminds us about it in the morning. That's pretty much it. Yep. And then we get into our day. So what did you do for the day in the night, let's say? So uh, I hung out with Maiko, got Maiko to rank nine now that nice. she is saved, <laughs> now that she's not in Tartarus. Um, and then in the evening, I watched the final movie, the boxing DVD with Akihiko oh, to nice. get his rank, his ability also upgraded. So finished him off of that as well, uh, which is very cute because you watch his own boxing matches. Yes. Yeah. He's a star. What can you do? You can't blame yeah. the guy. Yeah. Yeah. I hung out with Fuka, got our relationship to rank five. And then this is the night I went back into Tartarus to save that lone person who wandered in there was also a cat so i went and saved them not yes. really anything exciting to speak of just i went and did that okay uh and this is also the evening where this is the sort of the first evening where the conversations around the house are very much focused on like i wonder what strega is planning i wonder if they're planning an ambush or what's going to happen yes and what they're what they're cooking up which makes sense that they immediately, because they immediately, you immediately get this dark hour scene with Strega. Yeah, it's, it's very funny where they're like, if only we could know what they're planning. And the game's like, here's what they're planning. Yeah. We get a quick conversational glimpse over at Takaya and Jin. They are looking at the Tower uh, of Tartarus looming in the distance with the giant full moon, or like close to full moon, of course, behind it, bathing it in that greenish glow. And they're having this conversation. Obviously, Takai is very much in the focal point of he has no intention of giving up his power and does not want us to essentially destroy the Dark Hour in Tartarus. Jin talks about how he's most worried that he'll forget what happened to them. And we get a little bit of him reminiscing about their time at the facility, what they've done together, uh, you right. know, vagueish things that give us a hint of their life. Uh, and and sort of the what he called the fate worse than death that could befall them. Um, yeah, this is this is also an important point because it'll yes. come up later where he he tells you as a viewer that if the dark hour goes away, they'll forget everything in the same way that when somebody who doesn't have a persona goes into the dark hour and then comes out of it, they forget everything. But if the dark hour fully goes away, then even the Persona users will forget everything. And he tells you that yes. in no uncertain terms. And then later on the full moon night, he sort of like starts to say that, but then doesn't actually say it. So there's this, it establishes that they know that. And now we know that, but the team still doesn't know that. Yes. Very true. And, and it's kind of just those moments were connected a little bit there. No, absolutely. I appreciate you calling that out because I was going to go on the more personal side. So that is excellent to point out because I think, yes, yeah, there is definitely different dynamics of information going on here that we also see as we get to the full moon uh, of, of a few pieces, obviously stuff when it comes to the facility, you know, there's the even facility a, in all in capitalized and, and in quotes exactly and we've obviously been picking up those uh scraps of notes in tartarus as we go that have given us yeah. more backstory but we don't necessarily know the rest of the group has gotten that information there's all these moving pieces of info going on 
Yeah, the the latest note right at the top of Tartarus for this most recent one says something along the lines of like basically explicitly saying that personas are shadows. Yes. Um, which is something that has uh, sort of been talked about already, but not like maybe in a hundred percent clear terms. So yeah, I would say there's, there is important info and we really should pick a point and just talk about them. I need to go look at those. That's on me, but they do make, I think maybe theories or sides of conversations a little bit more succinct and clear and and help answer some things as you go. They keep talking about what's at stake here for them. Obviously, they want to hold on to this power that they have. Uh, what, they've also seen everyone they knew disappear, so they don't want to lose what they've gone through. They don't want to lose what feels like such a significant part of who they are be taken away from them without without a choice, you know? Right. And Jin very specifically, as I would argue probably very easily, the most underused member of Strega so far. We yeah. get a little bit of understanding of his uh, backstory and at least his motivation here because he talks about how when they were trapped together, Takaya spoke to Jin and taught him how to keep going. And that is his reason for living. Jin was sort of right. at like a breaking point of not wanting to go on. And Takaya's words of inspiration filled him so much that they're the reason he has continued on. They meant the world to him. That's why he doesn't want to lose this fight. That's why he wants to work for Takaya. Right. Yeah, he's very de- he's a he's very devoted to him. Yes. And so we're getting at least a little bit of understanding about why this g- green bespectacled man uh has has chosen to hang out with the the hippie guy who loves to just shoot his gun around. Only rarely <laughs> actually, I should say. Anyway, <laughs> that's the that's the whole conversation. It ends with him Takaya ominous, ominously going, "Who will fate elect to choose?" and then it goes away it would be more of a cliffhanger if we didn't also talk about the uh the the full moon this week but we're going yes to. yeah so we move on to november 1st into our new month and we'll touch on one of those uh, what that means in a little bit because uh, there's winter outfits that pop up in the evening oh right? does that happen yeah did i miss an outfit change everyone's dressed a little bit differently in the evening huh yeah, I think they wore these outfits at another time, or maybe I'm just so used to them wearing them. <laughs> it could be that as well. But anyway, they're there's they're in different outfits. At- they're cute outfits. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, what'd you do <laughs> with your Sunday? Uh so the home shopping channel had a bunch of expensive samurai stuff. The tomatoes I grew were done, and I got a bunch of them, including like golden tomatoes EX or something like that, super special ones, which is cool. Um, those heal like it was like 200 HP and 30 SP or something like that. It was it's good items. Mm-hmm. Um, then I got Kamiki to six because I've just been hanging out with Kamiki on Sundays. Uh, and in the evening, I walked. I I was considering going to Tartarus, but instead I walked Koromaru with Yukari because I wanted to try to get friendship points up with yukari and then it didn't give me friendship points and i was like do i reload <laughs> no it didn't and i was upset as well because i did i had the same day as you uh can oh, yeah. rank eight but yes i did that walk being like surely this will get me the points i need and then i'll be good nope. to go no no Bummer. it didn't <sighs> so we go on to november 2nd <laughs> yes we'll just keep moving so this is the last day before the full moon yes so i assume i know what you did with your evening <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. Uh, before we get there, though, we meet Fuka in the morning, who mentions, of course, tomorrow's the day. Yeah. And I like that you can joke with her, what's tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> Which is good. Uh, and then it goes into the day before we get a, a little evening scene. So what'd you do for the day? So the day I maxed out Maiko. So nice. I'm awesome. done with Maiko. Cool. Very, very cute little final scene with her. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was... I, I was wondering, though... Because this is another one of those confidants slight spoilers that sounds at least makes it sound like they're they're gonna be gone they're they're leaving in some capacity. I wonder what happens if you max her out before she is quote unquote kidnapped. Oh, I interesting. I don't know what would happen there. Yeah, I I would think it probably still takes her, and maybe she just you know the move got delayed. Maybe, but yeah, good no good good point. I don't know because I I maxed her out. Well, wait, have I maxed her out already? 
or no, I didn't before that time. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. I I got Fuka to rank six. Cool. And then moved into the evening where we have the gang all in the dorm reminiscing about how, you know, what they've gone through and, and looking ahead to tomorrow's last operation. This is really the conversation that hits the nail on the head that this is our last go at it. They're really, they really ham it up. <laughs> this ended the dark hour conversation tomorrow. They're just really, this game is really beating you over the head with, boy, I can't believe it's over. <laughs> yep. And, you know, they're they're going all through this. Akihiko has this resolve within him. We talk about how we met Koromaru. We made friends along the way. It's very much like, ah, clip show moment kind of situation <laughs> going is. on. Yeah, it is. Uh, they even, there's this f- funny off-tangent thing where they talk about how it's been even longer for Igis. But she's like, I was in stasis. I don't, I don't really remember most of it. So, no. Yeah. Mitsuru, uh, you know seems actually pretty distracted during this conversation at first. And as it goes on, they ask if the chairman recruited her, but she reveals that no, she knew about all this since she was a kid. Because when her father's team was ambushed by shadows while they were investigating Tartarus, her persona awakened. That's when she awakened to it. And she was the first person they ever had who was reliably able to control a persona. So... She yeah. was basically hooked in from the beginning because of that uniqueness to her. Right. So it's it Mitsuru is very special in the context of this whole situation and this whole game and yes. how kind of unique her situation was to all of this. Yeah. And she says, you know, obviously in terms of that distraction, what we see here is a continuation of how she's clearly felt throughout the whole game, even if she tries to hold it in, which is that she feels guilt that all of them are doing this because of her. She's right. like, if I had never, you know, awoken to my persona, we wouldn't be going through this right now. And Akihiko is like, no, we would have been dragged in or like other people. This whole situation, something would have happened. Like, it's not you didn't cause this. Yeah. So it's trying also, to assuage her. But yeah. She would have had to have been younger than seven years old. Right. Because she's a third year. Yeah. Or she, So she's like... 17 or 18 within the context of the game and 10 years ago was this accident so hypothetically she was in the somewhere in the you know six to eight range probably when her persona awakened which is pretty nuts (laughs) yeah it really puts into relief i think when you see the guilt that she has and sort of the trauma baggage that comes with it it's like yeah because this is the life she's known since really her conscious memory pretty much for the most part right, right. has been this forced effort to take on shadows that she didn't probably want to be a part of when she was a kid. So yeah, yeah. it really puts that into a, a, a relief, but you know, obviously the group is trying to say like, Hey, don't worry about this. It's not on you. We're all going to fight and we're going to bring this thing down and stop it all tomorrow. Hooray. Fool rank six. Yes. Which has been a while, I think. It's wild that the game is going to end with them only at rank six, too. I Isn't mean, it strange? It's it's a surprising choice, but I mean, yeah, I'm on board, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to ruin <laughs> the secret of how you rank it up four times within the next two days to get the trophy. <laughs> but, you know, we'll talk about that uh-huh. after. Uh, yeah, and then in the evening, I did just do the Charterist trip. And okay. I got the person, I got the cat, and I actually decided to just do the entire Monad passage at the end of the last section. Oh, nice. Because I, I had never done one like before unlocking the section after it, so I just decided to try it. And it was... There's one of those fights in there that is really grindy. <laughs> um, but otherwise, yeah, it, it, nothing to report there necessarily. I still have to do those, but yeah, I definitely remember a few of the Monad passages where it's like... I've been doing this for longer than a TV episode. What's going on here? (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, well, I'm glad you challenged yourself with that. I challenged myself with the image muscle trainer on the computer and got my HP up by nine. Proud of you. So the boss can't kill me now. (laughs) Anyway, I'm there. Oh, the shopping comes that day as well. Yes. And it's a fake sword. 
Yes, I was wondering if you read the description. Yeah, yeah, you you get the sword and it's like half the damage you could be doing. It's like really low attack, but it has like random ailment high or something like that. Yeah, I and think it's it, a, rage is high. Yeah, yeah, and it's like a counterfeit. It's not like a real ancient sword. It's a fake one, and I that's very cute to me. I really enjoyed that bit, especially because I didn't remember it. So I was like, oh yeah, let me equip all my best stuff before the boss battle. And I saw that, I was like, god damn, that was, that's a good joke. I'll take it's it. It's also the most expensive thing you could buy on that channel so far. Tanaka knows how to scheme us. It hurts even more when you're at rank 10 with him because you're like, I should have seen through this. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And then we move on to the big day, November the 3rd. The big day! And it's a day off. What a day to relax and, oh, do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. It is a day off. Uh, they mentioned the day before. Right. But you don't get to do anything. It doesn't even mean you get a free day. We just go straight to the dark hour. Yeah. And it's time. We arrive. The, the end of the game. The end of the game. We head to the uh, south end of the Moonlight Bridge. The twelfth and final shadow. Strigger nearby. Mm. Who did you put in your party? Um, I think for both fights, I put Koromaru, Yukari, and Igus. Okay. Which ended up being a really good party, but f- sort of funny because... I think both the main shadow and either Jin or Takaya were resistant to both dark and fire. Yeah. So, so Karamaru was doing a lot of supporting. <laughs> I think I, I had the same problem where I brought Koromaru in forgetting that and then tried a dark spell and was like, well, this guy's going to just swipe a bunch because yeah, but he has, yeah. he has that ability that's, a f- the physical slash attack that gets stronger when it's the full moon or exactly the, closer the full moon you get so it's not like he can do nothing can't do anything no totally um yeah. and he's also got some good support abilities with like his his thergy is where it charges everybody up is like you know fantastic the, the, yeah he's got options no he's he is i think one of the least optimal to bring in from a weakness standpoint for this battle yeah but can be useful if you've not destroyed his abilities. Because, yeah, I used, is it Getsui or, or uh, Getsui? I forget. Yeah, but it, yeah. It's, it's a useful move to have. Anyway, let's talk about what sets up for that <laughs> battle, as you mentioned. Wait, uh, what about you? Who did you take? Uh, I took for the first battle, I had, uh, it was Koromaru, uh, as well as Yukari, and then, oh, who was my third? Uh... Oh, it was I guess for so that was my three for the first, and then I swapped Ken in for Koromaru for the second battle. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, the other reason I I did that team is that that was the team I was rolling with in a lot of Tartarus at the end. Oh. Uh, okay. And so they were all like f- minimum five levels higher than anybody else in my party, and I was like, okay, this is I this, might as this well. is probably just let's do, go with the strong team. Yeah. Oh, that does remind me though when I went into Tartarus, I did an all guys team. It was Junpei, Akihiko, and Koromaru. Uh, so all guys loosely one is a dog <laughs> but anyway Jupe is like oh man it's just the fellas tonight none of the girls were coming with us and Haki, he goes like yeah is that a problem and it's just like yeah of course Jupe is going to complain about that i also appreciate that he says that and then koromaru is there yeah it's koromaru is like bros yeah it, but it's weird because Koromaru, it goes arf, arf, and then in parentheses, he's like, yeah, I hope the chicks were going to show up, man. Turns out <laughs> Koromaru is a, a ladies' man. Would you say he's a horn dog? A hound dog, my friend, because uh, he's pals with Elvis Presley. <laughs> anyway, moving on. You head to the bridge. Strega is, of course, there as we uh, could sense they were there. We get they once our- again really ham up the final fight last fight this is the end of the game sort of stuff yeah well i mean this is that we're coming into conflict with them in a major way here it's not just a cut scene in i will say alley. part of part of the reason i also making fun of this obviously we do this show i know that the game is not ending right here but also the the cast really hams it up like it is but it the game itself does not treat it like it's a, a surprise Sure. There's months on the calendar. There's confidants that haven't reached max rank. There's the end of Tartarus that is a wall that you could still potentially go through or unlock at some point. Like, there's all of these indications that this game is not near done yet. How's and, and so? 
how's your social link with Mitsuru link going with Mitsuru yet? Yeah, not good. <laughs> Although I, I was saying that that would be a really funny misdirect in the same way that the the Shinji stuff is, <laughs> if they were if they put a confidant in there that you could never actually get and that was just a total misdirect. That would I be do really like great. that. I I'm I'm really into that. I like that we're we're always like, how can the game trick us and make us feel dumb? <laughs> yeah. But yes. Anyway, anyway, let's no, get to this fight. No, you're good. To your point, we get to this final confrontation. And the end of all Strega, uh, Takaya specifically is talking about how, uh, you know, the argument of how we're just deceiving ourselves, like we shouldn't be getting rid of this because he's sort of use, uh, arguing the idea that using a persona itself is inherently not an evil thing. And so to take this away from us would be to get rid of a power that isn't itself bad. It just depends on how you use it and all that sort of thing. He believes we're kind of just doing this for our self-satisfaction but by by doing so we erase ourselves and to your point this is where they kind of get into the idea of like hey this might remove a piece of who you are right yeah yeah and uh obviously though it's irreconcilable so it's time to fight fight and we get in as fate will decide or the game programmers will decide (laughs) yeah And we Yeah, I was expecting something to happen with him being like, we will shall see, leave it in fate's hands. And fate is apparently just a, a fight. Yeah. <laughs> with, with as you, I think it would be fair for you to point out, a man with a gun who doesn't use it. A man with a gun and the other one is just tossing a grenade in the air real uh-huh. casually. And somehow... These guys they... are heavily armed. <laughs> and yet they won't take out this group of kids yeah to 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 jid's credit he does throw a lot of grenades in this fight but takaya i think only used his gun like two or three times the entire fight and one of them he shot my dog and i will never forgive him yeah we're gonna get demonetized just for that phrase uh (laughs) no he's a monster that's all i'll say no he absolutely is and you get in this battle with them it's it is an interesting fight in the sense of uh You have the two of them. They act like a party a little bit. They can kind of do the shift that you can and trade off. And there's a there's nice little whoa. We don't know what they're going to be up to here. Oh, can they? That doesn't that happen at one point? I feel like there's. I don't don't think they ever hit a weakness for me. Oh, I I guess not. Maybe not a weak. It felt like they they sort of did like the chain combo thing where they like oh yeah knowingly like handed over at, to one another right? yeah more and so at one point at one point Jin gives him heat riser or takaya heat riser i think and there's like a little bit of like comboing going in that sense too yeah yeah there the, i just remember a very pointed moment at first where it's like whoa we don't know what this team's up to and there was kind of yeah like that back and forth mm-hmm. between the two of them sort of thing so there's essentially Jin is really playing the support role here he is boosting takaya i don't know about you but i i take him out first just because he is souping him up okay. but this is tangentially what happened to Chidori? She's been in this hospital for like over a month or something. Like she's just been sitting there. And even Jupe has a line at some point that's like, I haven't been able to visit her very often, but I guess I'm going to do it right after we kill this shadow. And it's like, she just vanished. We stopped talking about her. And it's funny that they don't even really talk about her in this scene at all. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, the fight, the fight is cool. I will say this about it. I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop. I kept being like, well, this is simple. It's not a very, con- like, it, it's a neat fight that you're fighting a person and you see their personas arriving and they're using the abilities that we can use, minus gun, obviously. Uh, and and that's neat. But also, I guess it makes sense that it's sort of straightforward because it's just phase one, right? This is just phase one. And then it was not just phase one. It was the whole fight. <laughs> yeah, it, it's of the night phase one. But yes, for this fight specifically, this is just their fight. And yeah, yeah, it's it's essentially just a whittling down kind of fight because, yeah, Takaya doesn't really have weaknesses. Uh, he is a little bit stronger than Jin in terms of protections and defenses. Yeah. Jin, Jin's easier to take out. He's lobbing grenades at you, but you can knock him out pretty easily. And then it's just a matter of whittling Takaya down pretty much. And there's a cool thing where when you knock out Jin, Takaya says some, gets really upset and says a thing. And, you know, there's some, there's some nice quipping in the middle of the fight where they talk about stuff. 
Also, when you beat Takaya and he falls over, his falling over animation is so funny. It's really good. He, uh, it's so dramatic. It's just, yeah. It's so silly. That guy but would yeah, be... F- oh, go ahead. No, 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 please. I was going to just say, that guy would be like top actor in a community theater production of like the story of Jesus Christ, you know, like yeah. he, he would, I can just vision that guy carrying a cross and just being extremely like, Oh, don't worry about yeah. me. Anyway, I had to do the passion of the Christ a lot. It was, it was what happens when you go to Catholic school anyway. Mm. Yeah. So it was, it was a neat fight for sure. It was also just like pretty, pretty cut and dry. Right. Exactly. And eventually no shock to us. You defeat them. <gasps> I mean, that kind of was a shock to me. I was not expecting... I mean, I knew I was going to win the fight, but I was not sure. expecting them to just be like, yep, you beat us. <laughs> Time to end. Just, we're done now. This is... <laughs> like, Like their whole plan was to just wait on that bridge until you got there and then say, well, guess we're fighting now and then lose. <laughs> that was... Look, no one ever said nothing... these guys are masterminds. I mean, but this is the thing. I was expecting that they were, I think Mm. I was giving them more credit because they were a criminal organization with their own name who went around and murdered people for fun based off of a revenge website or whatever. And then now I got here and they're just like, we had no plan besides talking to you directly and then fighting you and sometimes using our gun. They have excellent branding. It doesn't mean they have the product to back it up. I guess that's true, yeah. That's kind of what we're dealing with here, which, to be fair, not to make light of them, but kind of lines up with like, hey, these are guys who were experimented on, have lived horrible yes. lives, are coming from this like very raw and emotional place of just wanting to exist and to have the power that they were thrown into and, and to hold on to that. They They aren't this mischievous, like rich group that is taking they are not the Carrijos, i guess to that point. yeah yeah right and and that's what that's the that's the angle that i appreciate this from yeah is that the whole game and especially this quote-unquote conclusion is sort of about how you don't really know everything you think you know yeah and so to have like from one perspective mechanically it's like why this, these guys are stupid but then from another perspective it's like oh these guys are stupid. I was expecting them to be more maniacal than this, and they're kind of not. And that's, I think, sort of part of the point. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm totally with you. They, they're they coming from a very emotional place. It's not from a diabolical, you know, world domineering. Yeah. They're not kingpin. They're just, you know, the little guy on yeah. the street trying to make by. Which it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you defeat them. You're having this little bit of back and forth with them. They're talking about giving you a little bit more of the idea of how they come from this experimented background. They can't just use their personas because it strains their bodies. That's why, like, they had the suppressants that obviously Shinji had. They kind of go down right. that road a little bit. Um, this th- is also where they have that little moment where they sort of Jin starts to hint at the idea that they're going to forget and your your party sort of is like wait what now and then doesn't he doesn't actually finish that thought yeah to to kai's like uh it basically cuts him off after they're going like you we it's clear we don't know what will happen uh but he he's essentially like hey withdrawal is not an option here uh and that he wants to prove his existence was worth something essentially and so yeah this whole interaction from here on is a little confusing to me, but sure. keep going. He goes to shoot himself. Jin stops him because he hasn't forgotten what Takaya said to him to keep pushing forward, to to strive for more. So he yeah. tells us to go defeat the shadow and is just kind of like, hey, you go do your thing. And they kind of, I, they say jump, but I would say more shuffle off and fall off the side of the bridge. Yeah. So Takaya goes to kill himself. And then Jin stops him because Jin cares about him, but then is like, and now we're jumping off a bridge and probably going to die from that. And he says, like, I'd rather die than give in to you guys. So it was just like a very odd interaction of like Jin stopping Takaya and then immediately pulling him off of a bridge. I don't know. It was, it was, it was sort of odd to me. And I think... Part of the the point of this is that I don't think that they are dead, right? They are probably going to come back in some fashion later is is what that leaves the door open for. But your party assumes that they didn't survive this fall and, and died. So, yeah, it's it's it was like a weird little end to this 
this bit, but the 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 short and long of it is you defeated them. You think that they're gone for your party thinks that they're gone for good, and you can just go fight the shadow now. Yes, yeah. The party's like, well, we still got a battle to do, so let's go and do that. You have the option to quickly change out your party. As I mentioned, I did. You stuck with your your party as you went on. I stuck with my party. Yeah. Cool. And then uh, I guess continuing the Christ motif uh, that I started <laughs> earlier, you go and meet a shadow who is sort of bound, puppeted on a cross, like their skin is kind of hanging off and, and stuck to this cross. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's very. Uh, it's very grotesque. <laughs> yeah. The shadow is is gruesome and it's and huge, really yeah. big, which is super cool. It is a very epic, cool final thing, and it's also the hanged man, which it's literally hanging from this thing, which is yes. cute. Yeah, it, it's uh, really shocking and, and I think effective imagery as it pulls up into the sky. As you said, it's huge, but it's also so high up we can't directly attack it. Yeah, not even with ranged attacks or magic. Yeah, which I question because I think Yukari is a pretty good bow, bows woman. I don't know what, uh, 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 archer? There we go. <laughs> I've I've watched the Olympics. No, let's stick with bows woman. Bows woman. Uh <laughs> Anyway, uh, the, <laughs> so I think she could hit this thing because it's also really big. Anyway, the yeah, game says fair. you can't. You have to destroy three statues first. Yes. But, there are these statues on the ground level. Uh, they each, as far as I could tell, because they got resummoned once for me, as far as I could tell, they each are resistant to everything except for weak to two things, and those things seem to be random. Yes, they each have uh, different physical random uh, affinities that they're weak to. Mm. And so I I think for sure, like one is weak to pierce, one is weak to slash, and one is weak to the other gotcha. uh, punch. So there's there's that bit going on. I forget if they have secondary then, weaknesses, and they might. But. I think they also then have a, a magical weakness as well. Okay. Cool. And then they're resistant to everything else. But the funny thing is, I killed these things incredibly quickly. Yeah. Basically every time, because I had a theurgy charged from the previous fight, and I used the theurgy, and they all just immediately died on turn one. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to ask. I think, the, you know, the thing with them is they are not so much a obstacle of whittling down, which is really nice, because I think it would be a pretty punishing and annoying fight if they had massive HP pools, but they yeah. are... Something more to just test your kind of like random lever pulling of what can you use to most most multifaceted attack everything with the, yeah. the best luck that you can. So and yeah. it's not just banging your head against a wall because you can time theurgies to use to take them out with that, or you can use Fuka's scanning to yeah. just immediately see what's what. Exactly, and it it is a fun little kind of you know, figure out which is which weakness. You do that, you knock them out. The the big guy comes crashing down to the ground yeah. and then you duke it out with him for a few rounds before he will go back into the air. I think for me, it only happened once to, to your point, but... Yeah, I had the three statues and then he resummoned the three statues and then I also had him go back up when he summoned the like mains, the big statue. Yes, yeah, the, that's kind of like as you get toward the the ladder and there's the final statue that you fight, but he yeah. he comes down, he has the ability to give himself more moves per turn. Yeah, which I don't know about you, but at one point, man, that got excessive. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> like, cause at one point, he used the ability to give himself more turns, and then in the middle of that, used the ability to give himself more turns. It's really I was funny. Like, this, yeah. is, this is not fair. It's it's like the Austin Powers peeing joke, where he just, he keeps going, and it's like, you yeah. think he's going to stop, and then, oh, no, a little bit more. Yeah, th this was, that's really cool, because... Um, this is otherwise a pretty straightforward fight as well. And it, it's interesting how much you kind of have to plan around his bursts of actions yes. because his attacks are strong and he also has one hit kill moves. Although I had a bunch of monkey alive, so that wasn't like a huge deal, but he, his attacks are really strong. And there is a world where like, if he just wants to target your leader, a couple God hands in a row, then you could be out of it. And so, yeah. like, I was using, like, I used uh, the item that gives you, like, a shield at one point so mm -hmm. that I was, like, just some insurance through those big turns. Um, 
Yeah, it, it, it was, an, again, not a wildly complex fight, but a, a very fun in the context of this game boss fight. Yes, a neat hook that I think works really well to your point, especially because if you are like I was because I had, uh, you know, especially using some of the physical attacks, people's health was going down because most of those, when you're using the persona-based physical attacks, pull out their HP. So you have to be mindful yeah. of that. And yeah, I got to a couple close calls with the with my leader and it sure. was it was scary but it's yeah it's a cool fight it it, it hits the sweet spot right like yes. it's not doing it's not doing anything super novel with the combat system but it really hits that sweet spot of like you got to plan your attacks well you got to plan your buffs mm-hmm. at the right time you got to plan when you're healing at the right time you got to think about how you're using your theurgies or when you're charging them yeah that it, it, yeah it's it's not this you know super crazy mechanically unique thing it is just exactly what i wanted what you want this like what you want to make the combat system in this game feel engaging and shine and absolutely and i saw so i really liked that aspect of it i did think it was like a little bit easy I don't know about you. Like he he hit a little bit less hard than I was expecting. I don't know if I just like leveled a little more because of that monad passage or something. But um it was it's not like he didn't hit hard. It's not like there was no risk, but I was surprised that I was like, "Oh, that was like a little bit easier than I was expecting it to be." Sure. I get I I do get what you mean. I think there is a thing with this game and I say this mostly having just like watched some gameplay and having heard anecdotally. I do think these battles really ratchet up on hard. And I do believe there are some listeners out there who have played on hard and talked about some battles previously. So maybe you can speak to this one out there uh, after you listen. But I I do know that's the case that I think to some extent it is a difficulty based thing here. Uh, Yeah. And that's, yeah. And I'm fine with that. I appreciate that. I appreciate when the normal is exactly sort of like, challenging but not but you're gonna beat it yeah and then hard is like mate you there's more risk involved and i i'm fine with that because then you get to opt into that if you want it exactly uh so anyway you go all through this as he said there's then the the final sort of round of of statues where it's a single statue that you're facing yeah. against similarly used a theurgy and it immediately died <laughs> yeah i used like two powerful attacks and then it was gone so do that even though it's kind of resistant to i think almost everything if not I everything think so yeah yeah and then one more round with him and then he's done and that's it we did it we beat we beat the game i guess hangs a banner up says mission accomplished we're good to go <laughs> we're all set she asks us for a victory cheer you do get this conversation yes the victory cheer, I, I hope you chose Let's Eat. Because I chose Let's Eat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then everyone makes fun of you for making the victory cheer Let's Eat. But it works for the conversation. Because then they start talking yeah. about what they're going to eat. And not only do they start talking about what they're going to eat tomorrow, they keep talking about what they're going to eat tomorrow for a weirdly long amount of time. <laughs> everyone gets to specify their favorite fish. Not only yet, not only do they start planning what they're going to eat, they decide on sushi, people start calling what they're going to get for the sushi, then they start arguing about that, and then they start talking about, like, the plans, be- like, it just keeps, they plan this sushi party, it is, it is the bulk of what happens after you beat this boss is them just goofing about sushi. <laughs> It, it's the conversation that is supposed to trail off as the camera pans away at the <laughs> yeah. end of the movie, but the camera forgot to pan away. It just never pans. And so you just hear them figure out the mechanics of this party, which I found funny. Yeah. And then they just say goodbye to the dark hour and yep. say, hey, we won. And then they, that's it. It ends. Yeah. If Mitsuru is like, this was all a curse, but they're sad to see it go. We've saved the world, even if no one knows it. Yeah. And then it's over. And that's the end. Spoilers. You might have seen where the next day goes because it does go right into the morning. Maybe you've seen that. Spoilers for next week. You do have to go into this little morning conversation that you do and then you get to save. But we're going to talk about that next week. Yeah. Um, The the funny thing about this, and this is where this the format of this show does come into a problem a little bit. And I'm going to give the game full full benefit of the doubt here because you've already seen it yeah this fight and this encounter overall both with strega and the shadow felt anticlimactic to me but 
I think that's sort of the point because they think it's going to be the end and they're building it up like the end and then it's not. It's, I mean, obviously I assume there's going to be more video game after this. So the actual encounter does sort of feel anticlimactic, but I, it's because I assume I have not played the immediate future of the game where we find out why that was anticlimactic, if you know what I mean. So that's that's not a thing I'm going to, like, ding this for. It's just just a very funny quirk of the show. And I'm glad that we're taking a moment to discuss this now and not, you know... Like, it's fine. It's funny, but it's just, like, it's... It's a little hilarious. No, it is amusing. I will say I I realize I do leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger playing this way. And I realize that might be a little frustrating. And I I know you're not someone who's going to hold it against the game. We will have enough to talk about next week that I'm like not. It felt like it made sense to not have a quiet episode this week. Yes. With a wild episode next week. So no. and And I again, I appreciate that we get a moment to kind of revel in what the characters think is happening like we get a moment where we're like we're done i guess because that's what they feel um and you know Jin had this line about like you get to find go and defeat the shadow you get to find out what's actually going to happen if you want to do it so bad like you're going to get to find out what you you don't understand what you're doing and now you get to see what you're doing yeah um and so obviously something else is going on i think my prediction from last week Obviously, we haven't seen the continued part of it, but my prediction from last week about what was going to happen was, as far as I can tell, correct, which is you defeat the Shadow, Strega shows up to screw things up somewhat, but really, you defeat the Shadow, and then it doesn't do what you think it's going to do. Obviously, I don't know that for sure yet, but that's where this is all leading, is, hey, we've defeated the Shadow, the Dark Hour is over, and I feel like it's not... I feel like it would it should have been a red flag to them that the dark hour I don't know didn't end <laughs> or just something. instantly didn't come crashing yeah yeah I don't know so I'm I'm excited to see what's going to happen because I think the vibe I get at this exact moment is that shit is about to hit the fan in a very serious way <laughs> um I think I think stuff's about to get bad (laughs) and we'll see. We'll see. Well, what could go bad? Because Strega's gone. We've destroyed all the shadows. Yeah. We're getting sushi. What more do you need? Everything's great. Yeah. They talked about sushi for so long. They really do. We figured out our sushi order when you came over for the hot sauce episode in like two minutes. Yeah. That was not a big conversation. Yeah. But to be fair, there were three of us. Yeah. This is like. Seven people and a dog. Hey, well, hey, if we're going to do that, there were three of us and a dog. <laughs> and Loki was the one who took up the most time. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Anyway, that is the weekend day that we are covering yeah. this episode. Uh, the next episode that we're going to do, we're going to keep it going back to the normal schedule. So it's going to be one day less that you so will six need. six days, okay. Yes. So play through november 9th so at ba- you know mondays being our last day again that's going to be the case play through and november and, 9th and we're doing one last day because there isn't a 10th the game is over on the 9th yeah that's the finale of the game so i don't want you to <laughs> play broken code i'm not yeah. rude so we're going to play through that week see the end and be on our merry ways uh we'll we'll see what happens as we get through this full moon and pick things up but hey congratulations everyone out there we defeated them we're good i am i know this is silly to stop the episode here but i am genuinely glad that we get to share a moment that the cast does of just saying yes. we did it yeah we did let's go have sushi yeah anyway That is our week, uh, as I mentioned, so November 9th, so 4th through the 9th for next week. Play through that. We'll have, I think, plenty more to talk about, and we'll we'll see where it takes us. But, Tom, before we wrap up, what's your pop quiz for this week, and is it about sushi? Is it not about sushi? What was everybody's sushi order? I thought that's what you were going to (laughs) do. I legitimately Uh. thought that was going to be the question. That is not the question. Okay. Uh, but if you have the answer, let us know in the comments. No. Um, 
of this fight, one thing stood out to me as the most surprising, the most impactful, the most uh, notable thing, which was this boss giving itself extra turns multiple times in a row. So my question for you is what is the name of the move that he used so many times to give himself so many extra turns? I like it. That's a good one. That's fun. Yeah. Well, if you know the answer or if you've got a creative fake answer, leave the answer that you think you have over at patreon.com slash take your time, youtube.com slash dronology, where you can see video episodes of this show uh, over at social medias, I am at J.M. Dornbush, Tom is at Tom R. Marks, or at Dornology at gmail.com. And of course, while you're in any of these places or you're checking out the show, don't forget to subscribe, leave us a review, give us the stars, uh, tell, tell the world you love us. It does help us out and gets us to more Persona fans, which uh, it is wonderful to see how this franchise has grown and continues to, and really just Atlas RPGs do in general. But that's for our bonus episode for you to go listen to. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, I think that pretty much wraps us up for this weekend and almost the game, of course. So, <laughs> Tom, as we nearly reach the end of our road, any parting words? Um, I mean, it's been a it's been a ride, and I, I am excited for the, the live sign-off episode where the whole cast comes back next week. <laughs> Can't wait. Uh, oh, we, I'm like, do we... Do, uh, how would a live episode work that would make sense for the show? If only it, if, if it got down to the hour, if if you knew the exact hour the end of the game would happen, I would have our episode at that time. <laughs> anyway. It happens at the dark hour. Ooh, so we can make it whenever we want. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, thank you so much to everyone out there for listening and for watching. Uh, we we really appreciate all your support. Again, if you want to go support the show more, you can head on over to patreon.com slash take your time for bonus episodes, early episodes, ad free and a wonderful, uh, joyous community who it is always great to check in with every week. Uh, but until next week. Yes, Tom. You know, what's funny is we actually have a dark hour this weekend. We By do. the time this goes up, we will have had a dark hour because it's yeah. daylight saving. So we fall back. So we oh. get. We get an extra hour that doesn't exist. It would be real good if I just dress, if I dressed Do up a live a- show during that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was going to say if I was in a coffin for that hour, but that might be a little <laughs> bit more complicated. Anyway. Anyway. I, ho- I hope everyone out there who's turning back the clocks uh, enjoys that extra hour of sleep. I know I will. And uh, otherwise, I we, we love you all. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And we hope you seize the day.